Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. The night shall soon come when St. Nick slides down your chimney and brings presents to the children. He'll then mount his sky chariot and return to his icy lair for a year, preparing for his next glorious foray. Sadly, this is all a myth as we scramble to get presents for Christmas and then pretend they were delivered by a benevolent sky god. In the spirit of the holiday, this brings up the question, what if Santa Claus really existed? What if this strange guardian angel really brought children gifts every year? Strangely enough, how would this affect borders, culture, geography, and demographics? That's the question of this alternate history. The holidays are a time of lethargy and darkness, as the long nights encompass you and the cold weather keeps you inside, at least if you live in a climate anywhere similar to me. Under these circumstances, rather than scrolling through Instagram or watching paint dry, why not learn something? This video is sponsored by Magellan TV, a documentary streaming service that has all sorts of content similar to this channel, such as geopolitics, current events, folklore, and the widest history content of any streaming service. I would recommend their documentary Tudor Monastery Farm at Christmas, a documentary about Christmas celebrations in the 16th century. Christmas was even more ostentatious back then, with 12 days of revelry. As a fan of historic cooking, I really appreciated their segment on 16th century English cuisine. Magellan is compatible with basically every device and is 4K with no additional cost. Magellan is also offering a buy one, get one free gift card so you can share with friends. If you click the link in the description, there will be a banner where you can take advantage of this limited time offer for my fans. Purchasing a gift card any time of the year will also give you an additional month of Magellan TV for free, even if you're already a member. Click the link in the description and start learning today. Firstly, for all of three people who are going to be saying, How dare you tell me Santa doesn't exist? Don't ruin the brains of my children! <sighs> I know the demographics of this show, which are overwhelmingly males between the ages of 18 and 28, whose raison d'etre is to pretend to be manly in order to get laid. Similarly, I've made genocide jokes and ranked countries on how easy they are to oppress, while also dropping Hundred Years War pickup lines, so this material isn't entirely kid-friendly already. For the fourth graders watching, I'm sure you're impressing your classmates with your knowledge of 16th century Huguenot colony patterns, but I don't want to be taking responsibility for your moral development. It would be so easy to nitpick this video. The nerd and non-nerd parts of my brain were at war on how to write it. The nerd side wanted to try to figure out an agricultural system that would allow millions of elves to support themselves in the North Pole. Similarly, how Santa could create an industrial economy in time immemorial that would allow him to mass-produce all these goods. Alternatively, whether Santa would only deliver the cultures that believed in Santa in our timeline, being North America and parts of Northern Europe. Similarly, the Orthodox Church in Sweden celebrate Christmas on different days of the year. How would you calibrate that? The non-nerd side of my brain wanted to spend the holidays chilling, and also realized there was no way you could make it all work rationally. There is no way with our current understanding of reality Santa could feed the tens of millions of elves needed to produce goods at the North Pole, or get gifts to everyone on Christmas night. Thus, I decided to use magic. There's going to be some nerd in the comments who's going to demand to know what school of magic I'm using. Is this Christian, Harry Potter, or ancient Greek magic? And I'm going to reply, nerd brain is not in charge here and we're literally using magic as a deus ex machina. Let's just assume that humans can't use the special Santa magic, and maybe some extra virtuous children get pixie dust sprinkled on them due to the magic of Christmas, a concept that annoys me tremendously. Similarly, Santa nerds will ask which rendition of St. Nicholas I'm using here. Santa Claus has gone through a long and varied history dating back to Thor and St. Nicholas who was a 3rd century Turkish saint who did some important stuff at the Council of Nicaea. I'll answer by saying the current Americanized Coca-Cola version that originated during the American Civil War. So here we are with a world with a magical god sitting in the North Pole that watches the world and delivers presents to all the children on December 25th. What could go wrong, you might ask? Quite a bit, actually. The first thing that screams out this timeline is that God is proven. The fact is that there's an omnipotent magical figure that brings presents every year and gauges present size based off moral behavior, basically just proving the existence of God. 
Similarly, having this figure in every culture would just reinforce the fact that God exists and is omnipotent. The entire world becomes a theocracy. A big weakness of theocracies is that the figure they claim to rule in the name of can't be directly proven. Pre-modern society has used omens, miracles, etc. to demonstrate the gods or God's existence, but this is taking it to a completely different level. Every regime would be ruled by priests, like India and our timeline under the Brahmins. Theocracies tend to restrain war and capitalism, which have been the two things that have been the greatest drivers of technological and social progress. With Santa using absolute morality to determine which children get presents, absolute morality would never be questioned. Philosophy would take a huge hit from this. Similarly, with Santa being all-powerful, it would kill science in its cradle. The roots of modern science come from the European Middle Ages, and most technological progress since has been dependent upon it. Technology would stagnate at a general Iron Age level. The entire world would worship Santa. Religions that existed in our timeline like Christianity, Buddhism, Hinduism, etc. would never exist, being replaced by Santaism. With reindeer as their holy animals and sleds as their holy symbols, with Christmas being by far the most important holiday for the entire world. However, Santaism is a quite vague ideology and Santa has no records of propounding ideology in our world. The main roles of religion are to provide ethical direction for the population, metaphysical understandings of the world, and a common sense of shared community. Santa provides none of this, and all of this is up to interpretation. Rival sects of Santaism would develop as each would claim to be the proper understanding of Santaism. These would wage war and compete with the other. This is actually quite similar to what happened with Judaism, Christianity, Sikhism, Rastafarianism, and Islam all claiming to worship Yahweh, yet none of them have a history of getting along. The objective binary of good kids, bad kids would promote black and white strict moral codes, like that of the Abrahamic religions in our timeline, rather than the more tolerant ones of East Asia. The nature of getting coal and stockings versus presents would create absolute moral judgments. Let's say people stop getting presents from Santa around age 12, but before that, getting presents versus coal rankings would be obsessive matters for most people. People who had received the most years of presents would be part of a moral elite, while those who received all coal would be degenerates. People's value in society would be determined a great amount by the goodness rankings they received as children from Santa. The greatest minds would be bent towards using the objective measures of Santa's indictments to determine what behavior was moral and what was not. Santa's views would thus become paramount for society. It would also take moral emphasis off things under 12s don't do like sex, war, and money. Actually, this objective sense of morality would be a great move for the world, as there'd be objective measures on moral goodness, and thus morally good people would get more benefits in life. The North Pole would also be a holy site that everyone would be trying to reach to talk to Santa. The wealthiest governments would be attempting this for centuries, and after a certain point, governments would likely be able to maintain permanent embassies with Santa. The results of this would be enormous. However, I don't know enough about Santa's personality to predict the results of this. A very interesting variable is the thing Santa brings bad children is coal, which is actually pretty valuable. One might think that some coal-starved governments would try to game the system by having children do one horrifying negative action a year to put them in the bad category in order to get free coal. However, Santa, being omniscient, would actually see through this ploy and punish them by not bringing coal. Something else interesting is that if Santa is bringing presents, which for starving peasants across most of history would have been food, and also for children, the demographic that died at by far the highest rate in pre-industrial societies, populations would grow at faster rates since children would die at lower rates. Something else is that Christmas already falls at the end of the harvest season in much of the Northern Hemisphere, when people already had food, which was the big reason Christmas was at the time of year it was, and that people had the food for a party. Having Santa show up in late December would be far less effective than having him show up in March, when people were hungry before the spring harvest. Another important variable is that Santa would be bringing physical presents a lot of the time. For most of history's hungry peasants, they'd just sell these presents for pennies on the dollar, as there'd be so much of them, as Santa would be dropping so much on the market. Santa's yearly production would stagnate human industry. This is similar to the effects of the Industrial Revolution, where cheap British goods undercut local industries in continental Europe, Africa, and much of Asia. It's also the same reason a lot of charity events undercut local industries in third world countries. For most of history, manufacturing came from cities, and so with less of a need for produced goods, urban economies would be weaker. 
societies would be far more rural. In pre-industrial agricultural societies, population growth was often a bad thing as it resulted in creating Malthusian pressures. Political crises were often heavily correlated with overpopulation in the pre-industrial world. In this timeline, with higher population growth, political instability would be more frequent. The elves are very interesting. If they're living at the North Pole, that means they'd be a lot better adapted to Arctic climates than humans. Elves would displace humans in places like Siberia, the Canadian Arctic, and Lapland. Similarly, due to their smaller size, they'd consistently lose wars to humans, who would regularly enslave them. Santa also seemed to keep them as slaves, which would set a precedent. The elves' mechanical ability seems incredible, and humans would take many inventions from them. They'd fulfill a role similar to dwarves in most fantasy novels. Interestingly enough, Santa's use of elf slaves would remove any argument that slavery was morally wrong. Slavery would flourish in this world. I feel like this is the most what if altist episode of all time. I took something inherently pleasant from most of your childhoods and say how if it really existed, how it would result in theocracy, technological stagnation, and mass slavery. I also make a bunch of hugely cynical statements and dropped a bunch of obscure text walls. It's all in a day's work. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Be glad no one's going to be coming down your chimney this year. Before we end, I have great news. What If Altist now has merch. Click the link in the description to buy What If Altist brands t-shirts, maps, mugs, and sweatshirts. Well, if you enjoyed that video, please like, comment, subscribe, or stay tuned for additional content. Or alternatively, check out my Patreon where I've got the first nine chapters of my history of the world as well as all sorts of cool maps. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.